Oh, so now I'm actually recording a video with the iPhone. And I tell it to focus. It will usually focus. Okay, there it goes. So it's it's focused on the chart. Let's move the chart over a little bit. And I can read that from here. Of course, the chart's supposed to be 10 feet away. Let's see where we're at. On the other side of this machine here, and on the uh, opter, we are at what? That's that's four minus diopters, so we're at minus four right now. So let's see, if I go to say minus, minus, minus eight diopters, it goes in four diopter increments. So there's minus eight diopters and the iPhone will focus. So this is like a nearsighted person. So now minus eight, which is a really strong prescription and the iPhone is still focusing through this, uh, this varopter. So now I want to say, take it down to say nearsightedness of minus 12 diopters. There's minus 12. And the iPhone can still do a good job in focus with minus 12 diopters. Let's go to minus uh, 16 diopters. Let's make sure I did that right. Is that minus 16? Yes, it is. Let's go to minus, whoops. Let's go a little stronger here. So the ability of the iPhone lens to focus really outdoes the eye greatly, which is interesting to me. So now I'm gonna take this thing to There's 24 diopters. I mean, that, that person is nearsighted and blind. Let's see if the iPhone can deal with that. It can't. It can't overcome 24 diopters myopic. Let's take it up now to 20 diopters myopic. And it can't overcome that either. Let's move the chart. No, it won't do 20. Let's take it back to 18 diopters. Okay, there's 18 diopters. And yes, the phone can, can, can compensate for myopic or nearsightedness with 18 diopters. So that's really interesting. Let's go now to there's four diopters, four sided. And I'm gonna now experiment with that. So there's four diopters. Tell the phone to focus. Yep, we can do four diopters nearsighted. No problem. Let's try. Eight diopters near side or far sighted. No, the iPhone won't do that. So the iPhone will compensate a bit for far sightedness, but it really does a good job with near sightedness. Now, okay, there's four diopters plus cylinder, which is, is near sighted. There's no lens right there at all. And I want to crank this thing over to say like eight diopters nearsighted. Let's try that and experiment with it. So here I'm going to go eight diopters nearsighted, or we can go to 12. Okay, there's 12 diopters nearsighted. And we know the phone can focus on that, so we'll do it, focus it again. And sure enough, the uh, iPhone can focus on that. Get my camera focused on that image. So you can see it's nice and clear. Now, what I want to do is simulate somebody with a, um, a stigmatic condition. So I have a stigma in my eyes. And if I get my glasses here and put those in front of the iPhone, I will simulate a uh, lens 
with an astigmatism. And that ought to be interesting to try. And this, this lens is probably, I don't know, three or four, maybe a combined power of five or six minus diopters. So let's put the, put the glasses on the iPhone here. So we'll just insert it over the camera lens like that. Okay, now the glasses are in line with the lenses in the phoopter. And it's not great, but whoops. This is kind of a, a clue, right? But it's fun. Okay, let's get these glasses in here. Get them to stay. There, they're in. No, nope, they're not. So much for uh, not practicing this, right? Okay, get these glasses in here. Hmm. Not having a great time with this. It's hard with one hand to do this right. Okay, the glasses are in. I tried this before I filmed it and it works pretty neat. Okay, so I'm going to use this soap dish here, right? Don't laugh. To hold the glasses up. That's how I did it before. Soap dish. Okay, now... Yep, yeah, now the glasses are in line with the uh, subject. So we're simulating a subject with glasses. And... The iPhone is still correcting. And I think I have this thing cranked on what? It's cranked on 12. So it's probably correcting 12 on the Pleopter and probably like combined on the glasses about 5. That's minus 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, minus 17 diopter correction. And so now I want to simulate if I can detect and correct astigmatic condition. Because the glasses are astigmatic, so those will it, it induce an astigmatism in my experiment here. So, I'm already at a uh, cylinder power of, of 2.5 positive cylinder. So, let's vary the axis here. So, we're going to change the axis on the philopter like this and see what effect that has on our image on the iPhone here. So the iPhone is trying to continuously focus, right? And I'm just going to change the uh, change the axis. And this is what you'll see when you're getting your eyes tested and you see the optometrist changing the axis. So I don't see a huge change in in the image coming out of the iPhone lens. I can see things moving around when the axis changes, but it doesn't blur out. So the lens must be a lot more dense in my eye in the iPhone. And if I change my cylinder power here a bit, there really isn't much of a difference. So what does this prove? Well, when you're getting your eyes tested they're changing your you're looking for cylinder this is kind of what you see um, they also use a JCC lens which I'm not using but um, what you want to do when you're getting your astigmatic condition corrected the doctor will basically put cylinder power lenses in front of this I'm trying to focus the camera on the uh, phone here will basically change your cylinder power and you'll see the little cylinder lenses going by and you'll also change your axis so that's what he's doing when he's going like say is, is one better or two better or three better or four better so I find it's easier if you can turn these knobs yourself because you have direct control of what you see anyway interesting and if we take the uh, camera away now the iPhone away and stop the video